Right, welcome. Good morning. Uh, Master's disappeared on us, but that's okay. Uh, we can we can see his empty his empty room, but I'm sure he'll be back shortly. So the question is this morning. The big question is uh, behavior. Can you change it? Do you change it? Why should you change it? Are you changing it, or do you never change? <laughs> and yeah, uh, you know, uh, some some of us are sitting there shaking their heads. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, I recall a. Uh, a fairly frequently said uh, statement by by that individual is saying a leopard can never change his spots. So well, we'll have to find out about those spots this morning and see see whether anybody can influence some change there. So Lee, yeah, over to you. Uh, yes. Yeah, so answers aren't aren't what I I'm going to provide <laughs> to those amazing life questions. Uh, I, so, so there have been a couple of life lessons for me. As a young wife, uh, I, it took me, I always say I'm a slow learner because it took me uh, 10, 15 years, years before I realized I could not change my husband. That uh, no matter <laughs> if I jumped up and down, if I if I asked, if I you know whatever whatever little thing it was that I whether it was you know put your laundry here or whatever the case may be, no that so changing other people is not something that I think we're particularly good at. Um, changing ourselves. Um, is entirely possible and I think that's the the thing that is one of the most exciting things that we've learned uh, we used to think that our brains were concrete uh, and that at a certain age round about seven or eight that concrete was set and that therefore you know you could never change now we understand that the plasticity of the brain and that if you are if you fire the right neurons in the right way over a period of time, you can change your thinking, you can change your habits, you can change your behavior. And uh, when I think about myself, I would, my joke about myself is that I have lost 60 kgs. Uh, it's the same five kgs that goes on and off, on and off for the last 20 years. <laughs> And um, so weight is something that has always been a struggle for me. And, uh, and, and it is this absolute yo-yo. You know, you I manage it for a period of time and then the weight cut goes on again. It's just magic, actually, that just, just descends. Um, and, and then I turned 50. And it, it was a strange thing. But when I turned 50, I realized... I'm still going to live another 50 years. And that's a long time. And I don't want to be a decrepit 100 year old. I want to be a strong, you know, go getting, still living life to the full 100 year old. And I can't expect myself at 80 to suddenly be fit and healthy so that I can manage the last 20 years. I have to start now. And, uh, and so that, just that trigger in my brain, so I th made me much more determined to, to remain a uh, healthy, healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. And, and so it was the consistency that I had never had before. Now looking at a long-term goal, 50 years. This is not something that I can yo-yo. This is something that I have to keep up consistently in order to maintain what it is that I want in the long term. And then that was, uh, then two other, thing, two other things happened. The one is I got information. I sat with a dietitian. I didn't list, I didn't go into Google. I didn't listen to the 500 opinions that there are out there as to what diet is the right diet or the wrong diet. I went to a dietitian and whether she was right or wrong, I followed her advice. And that, so that pattern of eating 
is now something that is my way of eating. It's not a diet, it's just my lifestyle and it works for me. And then, so it was information that was empowering for me. And then the third thing is, I, <laughs> I am a member of Discovery Vitality. And uh, it's what Jasper was talking about, this rewards thing, is that, um, so for those of you in the UK, uh, Discovery offers a, uh, they're an insurance company. And if you have life insurance or health insurance with them, they have a loyalty program that you pay for. But if you maintain certain points over the course of the year based on how many times you exercise, you then have to have certain tests so that your uh, weight is a certain and your fitness and all of those things are within a certain range, then you get uh, certain rewards from their uh, partners, but you also get a reduction in your insurance. So there's huge benefits to maintaining that health besides being healthy. And to be honest, when that test, I know that test is coming up, I know it's gonna happen every year and it keeps me on track because I know somebody is keeping me to account, which goes back to what we were talking about yesterday. So those are the things that uh, I have, that have changed my behavior uh, over the last few years uh, to help me to re remain true to my goal. And uh, so, yeah, let's, let's hear from you. What's worked, what doesn't, what hasn't worked. Um, and as Ivan says, possible, not possible. <laughs> Thanks, Leah. I was, I was getting seriously confused there. I thought we were talking about something completely different, weight and training and exercise and, and, and lifestyle. I'm glad you finished up with behavior in that last sentence because it brought us, brought us back, <laughs> brought us back off, uh, off, off that little trip. So yeah, I'm going to go to the man with the coffee mug in his mouth because uh, that's because I can. <laughs> and he's shaking his head. Uh, so, yeah. Hoping the coffee mug would put you off. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, behavior absolutely, definitely can change habits, etc. I agree that completely. And I think it's your underlying motivation. I think Lee, you've already spoken to that as well. Um, <clears throat> and so either with myself or if I work with other people, that's what I try to key into is what are the motivation behind the changes that you want to see. I do believe that there are limitations to changes though. Um, and I think that's based on personality and desire and preference. And so we will change only so much as we're willing to. So that keys into the motivation, but in terms of who we are as well. So while neuroplasticity is a real thing, your set personality is also quite a real thing. <clears throat> and so there's a lot of movement within that that I experience. Um, but that's what I look for is uh, who do I really believe myself to be and what is my motivation to make any changes? And I think if <clears throat> my experience is if you're going to be in any kind of long-term relationship and you are unable or unwilling to change, uh, you are in trouble, whether that's business or personal or whatever else it might be. And you can find motivations within that, uh, sometimes external, but they, I agree with Lee, they have to always be internal at the end of the day, changing others is a, is a bit of a myth. You have to focus on changing yourself. So that's the best I could find at the bottom of the coffee mug to start with. Thanks, Ivan. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm picking on, on, on the slightly younger setting <clears throat> that Lee was talking about, these over 50s and 100-year-olds and, and things like that. So we've we got we to start with the youngsters in the, in the group this morning. So, Nazipa, you're up next. <laughs> uh Good morning, Ivan. Thank you. I think for me, you know, one of the things I do is um, I do these trainings for the United Nations UNCTAD for entrepreneurs. And our trainings are based purely on behavioral changes. It's um, behavioral competencies that make entrepreneurs. So you, you train them literally on the different behaviors that entrepreneur, that successful entrepreneurs exhibit. And one of the things that's always interesting to watch is um, after 21 days when you go back, because this training is like it's a hectic training for six days flat. Then after 21 days, when you go back to check and, you know, I can assure you it's probably only, we've never gone beyond 
15% even of changes that you expect to have happened. And so I agree with Lee that changing someone's behavior is, is it's a huge thing that I really don't think any of us should concern ourselves with. You can only just plant a seed. I find personally that when I need to change behavior, it really is just a mental thing. Like from one of the, you know, habits I've struggled with for a long time since I started working for British American Tobacco was smoking. And, you know, I would stop and then I would start again. And I was saying now during lockdown, when they closed down cigarettes, I literally just said, yeah, that's it, I'm done. And I was done. And I just, because in my mind, I thought there's no way I'm going to be running around to the black market and looking for cigarettes at odd hours and running after cops. I, I'm not about that. And I stopped. I literally just said to myself, that's it, I'm done. I stopped. When last year I wanted to sort out my weight, I realized it wasn't good. All I thought was, let me just go stop having sugar. And I just went cold turkey on sugar. And that's it. I never touched juice again. I never touched sweets again or any or cake or anything that has sugar in it. And for me, I just have to make up my mind. It's a decision that I make. And sometimes it takes me years to arrive at that decision. But once I arrive at that decision, I've arrived. I'm done. That's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Nazipa. I think that's exactly it. You know, uh, people may think they want to change, but have they really made that decision? Uh, and, and that's, uh, I think that's a very good point. So, Mpulela, let's get across to you next. Good morning, good morning on this nice cold winter's morning. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I agree with you, um, Steve, at, at, as, as well as Nasib, in terms of the decision that one has to make and so forth. Uh, but to, to speak of myself in terms of personal change, what I then tend to do is, I always have this thing in my head that um, humility is, the, is a prerequisite to change. Um, to say that, you know, on, only when you humble are you able to realize your fallacies. Um, and that it, it then becomes what ignites the want and the desire to change. So it's that realization that brings about the, the want to change. And that pride usually has an opposite effect because uh, pride generally leads to defensiveness and it leads to not wanting to change. Uh, forgive me, I don't usually make examples, but I, I take a Donald Trump as a great example of how when there's pride, change becomes very, very difficult, you know? Uh, to change takes realizing that either you're doing something that is not right and accepting that, and that then says, I take that position that I'm not in the right place or not doing the right thing, therefore I need to change. So in my case, I usually start from there. And that's how usually I would tell whether somebody has an ability to change or not. It's just to look whether they have enough humility in them or not. And that will tell me whether over time they have an ability to change or not. But also what I do for myself is I then introduce a different way of thinking. So I would look at what is it that I need to change and then see what my mental process is about that behavior that I need to change. And then say to myself, how do I introduce a different way of thinking about this thing so that I do it differently? Usually scripture is my default material that I would use so that I introduce a different thinking. But what that then means is that I need to do it repetitively or do it over time until it sinks into my head and I find myself naturally starting to think in a new way. Because again, unless the mind changes, it's difficult for behavior to change. So then I train my mind. Um, literally, I would write it on paper and keep saying it every single day, every morning when I wake up. Um, you know, because again, there's a line that says, as a man thinks, so he becomes. All right. But then what I then do next is to look at what in my environment supports the old behavior. And then I try then change those things and put new ones that will support a new behavior. I'll put a, 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 a silly example. Sometimes I'd have this thing that I need to wake up three o'clock every morning because there's a lot that I need to put into place for my 
own uh, spiritual growth, but also then to be able to meet the needs of, of the family. Then I would put things in such a way that it's difficult for me to continue sleeping so that the, the, my environment encourages the new behavior I'm trying to, 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 to create. So that's another thing I do is to change behavior. Sometimes there's a need to even change the people that supports the old behavior. All right. Uh, but then I also take in mind that change is a process. And if I falter, it's good to forgive myself, but, but strive to stay the cause, but then also evaluate what has caused the, the regression. Again, it's going back to the mind. How did I end up thinking about this old behavior and it ended up doing it? What is it that I need to do to reverse that? Usually that's my process. But for me, the prerequisite is humility. Great. Thanks, Mpulela. I think you just wrote the manual on it. So well done. Step-by-step uh, <laughs> -step detail process. Very, very good. Uh, Donovan, let's get across to you next. Uh, morning, everyone. I hope I'm loud enough. Um, yes, I just put a comment there, which is basically, you know, my views on it. Um, you know, as the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, it's quite a process. You know, it's a determined process you need to decide uh, focus and stick to it uh, it's a daily process as Mpumalelo says, says so you have to practice your mind you have to train yourself you have to sometimes force yourself uh, you know to to change in the right direction take yeah thanks Donovan right let's get across to Samantha Good morning Samantha Can you hear me? Morning, morning. No, sorry, I'm 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 a little bit late, so I'm just listening to to everybody and trying to pick up the the pieces of the conversation. I think uh, change is extremely con uh, uh, complex. I think I think it, it, there is a combination of the attitude and drive, attitudinal drivers, but I also think that context is uh, critical. It's, context is what often lets us slip into old habits or not effect. Um, you know. Effect, uh, institute effective change. And I also think we tend to be quite hard on ourselves and think that if we need to change, we need to go from A to Z quite quickly. And if we haven't done it within the parameters we've set for ourselves, then we don't judge that as effective change. When actually a lot of the biggest changes are done incrementally. It's almost that you get to the end and look back and see how much, you know, you reflect on how much change because you don't realize how much because you're, you're in this incremental process of change. So I think we need to not always be so hard on ourselves, have a destination, but understand there are little stops, I guess, along the way sometimes. Great, thanks, Samantha. Great input there. So, Master, let's come to you next. Yeah, thanks. I think uh, the, the topic comes at the right time where the first change that I had to adopt was to ensure that I'm here at 8 o'clock. So uh, it is, it's still a bit harder, but uh, it's, it's, it's something that is happening. And I can see if you, one of the things is if you value something, the change becomes a bit easier. Uh, and if you, you you sort of yeah value a particular activity or a particular behavioral change that it has to take place, value becomes very very important because then you you would apply your mind and ensure that you are there or you ensure that that particular thing that you need to change you give it the desired attention. But also, you know, there are quite a number of theories around change. Your know, twenty one days and everything else. Uh, I think it's, it depends on you uh, as to are you really, uh, I mean, determined uh, to, to, to change. As for changing people and stuff like that, it's a, it's a very hard one. I mean, to want people to change their behavior and their thinking and their perceptions about you is a very, is a very difficult, difficult thing. Uh, especially when it comes to perceptions. People have got their own perceptions. They think whatever they think and uh, about you or about how you behave. So one of the things that we tends to be very hard is wanting to be a people's person, wanting to please everybody and change 
into what they think you should be. And uh, it's one of the things that I, at times one struggles with. You, you want to be what other people think. And we are not reading from the same book at times. You know, we, we're reading from different sources uh, from time to time. Uh, Pumele would quote Romans 12 too. And uh, we found that I'm not even next to, to the Bible to try to determine, but his expectation would be, you know what, Master, as you think, so you will become. Uh, and quote him from a different source. So at times we, we really need to establish what is it that we believe in and what is it that we value so that our change does not become a nightmare for ourselves. Right, thanks, Master. Yeah, I think uh, I think you picked on some some excellent points there. People struggle with. I think they they changing for the environment when you know change really has to be internal for yourself. I think uh, so. Great, some great points there. Right, Cecile, let's get across to you next. Sure. Um, yeah, it's, I believe that um, change comes over a period of time as well. And um, <laughs> the, like like Paul was saying, she's um, struggling with while well, she was struggling with um, cigarettes and whatever. Uh, I think the, the, the addiction, and I don't even think people that don't do it know that it's an addiction, is um, biting your nails or fiddling with your nails, um, which I'm, and I'm sure it's genetic because virtually everyone in my family kind of have a, have a problem with their nails, the females. Uh, well, even one of my brothers. So, so when, when I lapse into those things, I think, no, um, discipline, uh, discipline, every single day, discipline. So with all the things that I want to change, I think daily discipline is the only key to changing my, my habits. Um, so that's why I train every day. I eat healthy every day and I'm very conscious of when I stray. <laughs> so, um, and the same with working. Um, I, could quite easily work too late. And um, so I try to force myself to, to get into the habit of finishing off at a certain time of the day. Otherwise, the day just gets out of hand. So um, I, whether it's easy for me or difficult for me to change, I'm still trying to assess that. I don't know. Um, but I try to be disciplined about when I realize that I need to change about things. Yeah, so it's a difficult topic. Great, thanks. Uh, thanks, Asiel. All right, Ed, let's get across to you next. Yeah, I thought it was interesting what Lee said about trying to change your husband because it always fascinates me that you fall in love with someone because you like them and then you try and change them. Um, so that, that, that's a bit flippant. When I first got married, I used to really annoy my wife by when I filled the kettle... I used to leave the lid on the side and it would leave a sort of a wet mark on, on the work surface. And that used to really annoy her and she used to have a go at me all the time. And in the end, she changed the kettle to one that didn't need to take the lid off to fill. And I, I thought that was a really interesting lesson. If you can't change one thing, change the other. Um, and I found some changes really, really, really easy. When I decided to go vegan, that was it. Decision made, job done. That's going to happen. Like Lee, although because I'm older, I probably lost 200 kilos. I struggle with my weight and I, I struggle to not have that extra, extra packet of chips or extra beer or whatever. So some, some things I find really, really difficult. And I think it's the everyday small ones. The big ones, you've got this huge impetus. So it's much easier to make a big change than a small change, I think. And I tend to, if I really want to make a change, I do things that force me to do it. So, for example, when I gave up using a car, I chose to do it the day my MOT, my Certificate of Roadworthiness, ran out. So I couldn't use the car without having to go through a long process to get it back on the road. And I think that's, that's my way of dealing with change when I really want to change. I put barriers in my way so I can't slip back. Whereas, of course, I don't put a lock on the, on the, on the crisp cupboard. Or if I do put a lock on it, I've got the key so it doesn't work. So that's my thoughts on change. 
Right, that, I, I love that. So if you can't change the animate, change the inanimate. You sort that one out very quickly. <laughs> very nice. Yes, but let's get across to you next. Well, I have morning. I have little to add. I almost just want to say I refer to the aforementioned. Uh, so just go and uh, watch the video and read the chats. Um, so uh, I was trying to think of how I had to change some of my behavior to get things done. And I remember my biggest uh, adjustment in my life was when I prepared for the comrades because I'm not a natural athlete. And uh, with uh, one's basic uh, fitness uh, that you have at that time of your uh, youth, uh, you can do a five or a 10K with not too much uh, preparation. But when it comes to the longer distances, you can't do it if you don't prepare. Uh, and I had to eventually, first of all, I had to find a, 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 an accountability buddy to commit to that uh, we would find each other uh, at a certain place outside on the road on a certain time of the morning. And those days we didn't have cell phones that you could quickly phone the guy to say, I don't feel like running today. Uh, so while you lie there in bed and you think this is so nice here, uh, you think of your buddy, how do I tell him now I, I want to stay here? So the best is you just have to get up and do it. And then the other one was to get to a club and then commit to certain training run nights. So they, I think they had two, two training runs a week. Um, so uh, I, I was thinking along those lines and I think for me it's, and I, I, I do mention it a lot, but it has become part of my uh, way of living and uh, is uh, build the habits, then the habits build you, or build the system, then the system will build you. Uh, and so, like uh, Nozipu said, you know, you first have to clarify for yourself why is this important to you. If it's not important enough, you know, you'll give it a half-hearted attempt and you won't do anything. Uh, but once you understand the objective, uh, for me, then my the next step in my process is to develop a system. Uh, to say, what will, if I follow this, will uh, keep me moving forward on this obje objective? And that could be uh, arrange an event uh, or a series of events, uh, regular communication, uh, identify the activities that need to be done consistently. Uh, and then the next step is just follow the system and do it. Uh, but then comes uh, the time of evaluate the progress. And if you, you're not happy with the progress, tweak it or scrap it. Uh, so I had uh, a few times in my life where I just walked away from the system that I created and scrapped it because it wasn't fulfilling the objectives. But most of the time, it's an ongoing process of tweaking it uh, and adjusting it. So, yeah, so I'm very much one for uh, routine. Uh, establish your own routine, not a routine that someone is enforcing on me, but find a routine that makes sense. And by doing the little actions, it all leads to the big goal. Sure. Thanks, uh, Jasper. Uh, after, after your opening statements, I thought that was going to be a short, sweet one and uh, <laughs> turned into another manual. Well done. So that, that's great. Uh, right. Uh, I think we're up, up to uh, Trevor to tell us that uh, he refuses to change. So, uh, Trevor, over to you. All right. So, um, I'm, I'm probably a, a catalyst or a change agent if if I had to look back at uh, what it is that I've done uh, in all of the businesses and sporting events and clubs and things that I've established. Um, but I, th I think I want to get back to this, a leopard doesn't change its spots. Uh, I absolutely concur with that particular statement and I love that statement and if there's any animal persona that I had to take on it would be a leopard. Uh, I, I, I just love it. It's just a nice, lonely animal. It's strong. Uh, it checks out there. There are a couple of uh, animals in the animal kingdom that are a lot stronger than it. Um, but it knows how to mind its P's and Q's. Uh, and it knows when to attack at the right time. But I think um, uh, this not changing its spots, um, being a change agent and a catalyst, um, I concern myself with people who try and change other people. Uh, so 
uh, if so to me the spots of a leopard are unique and they're a gift they're a, they're a gift that you're actually born with um, and then uh, I think that gift is further added to by the circumstances that you grow up with over a period of 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And, and they, those circumstances add to your gift. Uh, and then people come along and they turn around and say, man, we've got to have that guy in our team or we've got to have that girl in our team or uh, we've have them uh, as part of our working environment. Man, we've got to hire them. Then the moment they put you into their team and hire you, they want to change you. Now that's a load of rubbish. Uh, for me, you got to be honing and buffing those spots to make them really shine so that you've got a whole menagerie of, of animals out there uh, from all different perspectives. So uh, I think this leopard changing its spots, uh, instead of trying to change people and change behaviors, is to actually turn around and say, uh, which of their behaviors do we really want to hone and allow them to work out um, and maybe influence, um, but surreptitiously those negative behaviors that they themselves want to change internally. Now, listen, uh, all power to leopards. And I'm not talking the black leopards, Mpumalelo. All power to leopards. All leopards matter, Mpumalelo. <laughs> How do you change you, Trevor? I think that's my question. Don't even try. Don't, my wife, my wife is, she's got the manual, she's working hard, it's about 40 cupboards deep, uh, how to change Trevor, it's not going to work. <laughs> I can definitely vouch for that. <laughs> so yeah, interest, interesting, you know, and, and it, it fascinates me how much of the discussion has, has gone around uh, changing what it might be perceived as bad habits. What, what about just creating good new good habits so isn't isn't that also isn't that also change you know why do we always focus on the on on what's what's wrong and and uh, and and feel that we have to do something better or different why don't we just choose something better and different and do it um so yeah those those are those are my my, my thoughts on that i mean we all have bad habits we all have good habits but uh um, you know, again, just look for what the things are that are going to really benefit you going forward and, and decide uh, that's what I want to do. And that's why I want to do it because it's, because it's good, not because it's better or different to something. It's just because it's going to be beneficial to me and, and, uh, and the way I operate going forward. So yeah, those are my, my little thoughts on the, on the topic. So, uh, Lee, over to you to wrap up and, uh, tell us what habits we're going to form tomorrow. Well, you know, if we were doing a, a social research project just by listening to people's experiences, uh, every, everything you've said fits into the, the social research that has been done over, uh, over years and years and years. And I, I quote uh, Kerry Patterson and Joseph Grenny particularly. Other books, and I also put that in the, in the chat, uh, Dan and Chip Heath have written this book called Switch, which is a much simpler uh, but also, you know, really, really helpful book, but it's the same principles um, of, you know, motivation, information, uh, support from others, and context, uh, all playing a part, and they all have their influences, and it's not one thing that, that is going to, to make a difference. And, and when you're thinking of, of changing uh, societies, when you're thinking of changing whole organizations so that they're more, uh, um, so we're uplifting and, and making those kinds of in-depth changes, this be, these things become important. Um, and, but what, the thing that I want to actually um, focus on for tomorrow, and this is Hopefully, what I'm, uh, what I'm thinking about is trying to be innovative, trying to think of new things and different things. And I uh, think about Edward's wife changing the kettle. Um, <laughs> because there's a point of conflict. And then what changed was the environment. You change something in the environment, the conflict's gone. And it, they used, a, in the Joseph Grenny and, and Kerry Patterson book, they used a very similar example of uh, the sort of diners 
in the US just after the Second World War. So what happened was during the war, women now were running the diners. They were previously before the Second World War, it was um, men were cooking and the women were serving. Now women were suddenly, they were cooking uh, and chef and uh, chefing and, and, and running the whole diner. The men came back from the Second World War. Now they wanted their jobs back. So they go back to chefing. And, and now there's tremendous conflict because this is the way the women had done it prior. Uh, and now the men want, you know, and so they, the, 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 where the presenting issue was, was whose order got uh, first. So the waitress would come and she'd say, no, it's my order that's first. And the chef would say, no, 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 it's so-and-so's order. And there would be this battle backwards and forwards as to whose order uh, was going to get done first. And so that's where the spike came, the metal spike, where you write down your order, you put it on the spike, and that's the, that's the one that gets done first. So this simple metal spike solved all the conflicts as to whose order was going to get done first. And, and so I'd like us to think about that tomorrow is what in our environment, what simple thing could we change that would trigger a different response from people in our environment or change something significant uh, that we hadn't thought about. That's not about a mindset or a, you know, this hard, difficult thing that we think it is. Maybe, maybe it's as simple as buy a new kettle or, or Donovan's wife, hide the toaster. Do something in your environment that will change the behavior. So that I'd like us to think and talk about that tomorrow. Great, thanks, Lee. Well, I trust none of you go going to go off and sit on any metal spikes uh, between now and tomorrow. But uh, that could take, that could get an instant reaction and have some quick changes. But uh, great, folks. Thanks, uh, thanks for all the great input this morning. Have a fantastic day further, and I look forward to uh, talking about it further tomorrow. Go well. Have a nice one.